It's Friday, November 4th, and it's time for your Barbados Today morning news update. For Greece, period extended by the Barbados Water Authority to defaulting customers over the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic will run out soon. The warning comes as outstanding payments to the BWA reach the $100 million mark. Acting General Manager Christopher Mapp said, while the threat of this connection is not particularly imminent, it would be in the best interest of all defaulting customers to visit the authorities' Pine St. Michael offices and set up a payment plan. Government is considering several initiatives in a bid to increase Barbados's resistance to climate change. Prime Minister Mia Motley made the disclosure during a press conference from Brussels on Thursday. These included the renegotiation of the planned desalination plants in the north of the island to help address water woes, the continued attention to clearing drains and preventing flooding, moving towards electric vehicles, and the possibility of implementing wind farms. Prime Minister Motley said that the issue regarding the desalination plants was a major one that needed to be addressed urgently. What are you going to put on the table to allow us to be able to, one, halt the coastal erosion that's taking place, two, deal with the whole question of saltwater incursion into our wells. And if that happens, where are we going to get the fresh water from? Are we going to have to build the desal plants? The last government negotiated two desal plants. We've started the process of saying, look, we want the plants, but we believe that one, the volume that the last government asked for at 6 million gallons is way beyond what we can take now and what we need now. And therefore, we will need to renegotiate both quantum as well as pricing because we believe that the pricing was excessive and we believe also that the quantum, which therefore meant we would pay more because it's a take or pay contract that the last government negotiated, means that whether you use it or not, you pay for everything from day one. We have established a college of negotiators um, headed by Mr. Anthony O'Dean, along with our White Oak, our advisors um, and other people to be able to renegotiate those contracts. But what it means is that we need to be able to protect our access to safe drinking potable water, whether that comes from groundwater sources or whether that comes as a result of desalination. Insurance companies in Barbados have started to exclude homeowners and motorists from cover for any adverse economic or medical impact arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the Insurance Cooperation of Barbados is one of the first companies to introduce a COVID pandemic communicable disease exclusion clause into the policies of clients. The initiative took effect on November 1st. Emmanuel Joseph has the details. While President of the General Insurance Association of Barbados, Randy Graham, said on Thursday that the entire industry will eventually adopt the new clause at varying points over the coming year, he is assuring Barbadians that there is no need to worry. Graham explained that the policy changes is the result of a directive from the reinsurers who are seeking to expand the globally accepted definition of infectious diseases to include the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. An ICBL memorandum sent to its clients and captioned Communicable Disease Exclusion Clause read in part, and we quote, It is hereby understood and agreed that with effect from November 1, 2021, the insurance by this policy excludes all actual or alleged loss, liability, damage, compensation, injury, sickness, disease, and death, unquote. Also excluded from cover will be medical payments, defense costs, other costs, expense, or any other amount directly or indirectly contributing to, by, resulting from, or otherwise in connection with a communicable disease or the fear or threat, whether actual or perceived, of an infectious disease. The ICBL, however, told its clients that all other terms, conditions, exceptions, exclusions, and or provisions of their policies remained unchanged. The Insurance Association president, meanwhile, is assuring Barbadians that neither their premiums nor the level of their cover would be adversely affected. We've not seen any change in the policy rates because of the pandemic, so I don't think the pandemic will 
will cause any hardship in any form of increased rates mm -hmm. um, or, or reduction in cover. Uh, we don't see that happening, and, and this change is really just a standard. That is the, the definition of, of infectious diseases to, to also include pandemic, but we don't see any impact on on the regular insurance purchaser or of the, on their policy or on their premium. We don't, we, this will not impact their premium. Graham said it's just a matter of time before the policy adjustments is in place across the entire industry. Some people may bring it into effect um, at different points because of the, because it's going to come down from there, from the re, from the reinsurance from the reinsurance companies, right? Mm. So some people have their reinsurance renewal. Well, some of the companies have a reinsurance in January, in January, some in April, some in June. So eventually we think all the insurance companies will get the same directive from the reinsurers, but it probably will come at different points during during the year, depending on when they, re, they renew their, their reinsurance policy. That was President of the General Insurance Association of Barbados, Randy Graham, and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The Pan American Health Organization has given qualified support to Barbados' decision to ease travel restrictions for vaccinated travelers, describing it as a good measure. Speaking during the weekly press conference on Wednesday, PAHO Director of Health Emergencies, Dr. Ciro Yugate, however, warned that the easing restriction for travelers will come with risks. It is important to highlight that the vaccinated persons, as Dr. Jarvis already mentioned, and we have been mentioning also several times, are better protected. Uh, maybe not, will not completely eliminate the infection, but they are um, way uh, more protected than the persons that are not vaccinated. And in that regard, allowing the persons who are vaccinated is a very good measure. But we, what the recommendation of WHO and also PAHO is not to restrict the travel, the travel of uh, essential travels of persons who are not vaccinated because the vaccines are not widely available, unfortunately, and it is, it is a very important measure. And also recognize that when you uh, reduce the restrictions for travelers, you recognize that you are accepting a certain level of risk so in the communities that are accepting or the countries that are accepting visitors, uh, it is important to keep in mind the local transmission and also to strengthen the surveillance capacity. The Sanitation Service Authority continues to roll out its residential waste collection improvement project and officials from the public-private sector partnership behind the venture declared an overwhelming favorable response from the public. It's been some five weeks since the initiative was launched, and SSA spokesman Carl Padmo said over 16,000 rollout cuts have been given to households so far. From the SSA, I can tell you that we are pleased with the response of, of the public. Yeah. They have been calling, even giving suggestions, you know, and, and, and even the elderly, they are pleased with, with the fact that they, they, they can roll it out instead of not having to lift up a big can about that. Uh, to date, uh, based on the information, uh, we have you know, uh, 16,485 um, rollout carts and bins delivered. That, that's amazing. And the program has been going just about, what, six to eight weeks? Yeah, just over five weeks. Just over five weeks. Uh, to, to deliver 16,000, two households, we are pleased about that. Yeah, so the four cart lifters um, installed and we have at least three trucks uh, remaining yeah. um, to, be, to be installed as well. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living.
To news from the region, Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis has pledged to do more for Hurricane Dorian survivors. He spoke to Our News, Bahamas. I'm just so moved by the fact that that so, so little has been done. We sat down with the Prime Minister to discuss his meetings at COP26 and the current state of storm-battered Abaco in Grand Bahama moments after he arrived at the High Commission of the Bahamas here in London today. Good morning, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good morning, Prime Minister. Shall we work, Prime Minister? I'm nice to meet you before, yes, yeah, we know each other. Good. No, thank you. How are you? No, Welcome. Hurricane Dorian has been the focal point of Davis's discussions in the UK this week as he sought to hammer home the urgent need to tackle climate change, which threatens our chain of islands. Two years after the monster storm, which left an estimated 70,000 people homeless, dozens of families remain in domes and trailers dotted across parts of Abaco. When our news visited the island in September, some residents shared the challenges of dome life, including mold, little privacy, and the terrifying sounds of rain beating against the small structures in bad weather. Davis says his government plans to change that as soon as possible. I feel for these poor people who I've seen them um, living in these tents still. So my minister of uh, my minister of housing, along with the, along with my minister of state, who I've put in charge of disaster um, recovery, they are going to work assiduously to ensure that we put them in homes as quickly as we can. And uh, we are, they are now in the exercise of looking at what type of homes will be built, how quickly be done. So a summer announcement should be made during the course of our our contribution to the supplementary budget. And finally, the World Health Organization's Executive Director, Dr. Tedos Cabiesos, on Thursday announced that the organization had approved another COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use as cases and deaths from the virus increased again. 22 months since the first case of COVID-19 were reported and almost a year since the first vaccines were approved, Reported cases and deaths from COVID-19 are increasing again. More than 5 million deaths have now been reported, and we know the real number is higher. We are still losing more than 50,000 of our sisters and brothers every week. Last week, 56 countries from all regions reported an increase in deaths from COVID-19 of more than 10%. Yesterday, we added another new tool with the emergency use listing of Covaxin, the AIDS vaccine to receive WHO validation for safety, efficacy, and quality. Emergency use listing contributes to vaccine equity by enabling countries to expedite their own regulatory approval to import and roll out vaccines. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.